With interest rates increasing so many times since March 2022, we have had a huge impact on the housing market as well as the general cost of living here in Brampton, Ontario. Without having a plan for something like a recession, you may be in a situation that you can't climb out of. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the cost of living right here in Brampton, Ontario, as well as multiple ways to prepare yourself for a rainy day if it does come. By the way, my name is Amira Dennett and I'm a local real estate agent right here in the GTA with eXp Realty. And if you have any questions about the Brampton real estate market or what is happening in our market today, go ahead and click on this link right here because I just posted a video on October's market update so that you are informed about what's going on. Also, my contact information is right there in the description. So if you have any questions at all, you can just pick up the phone and give me a call. I always answer my calls. So go ahead and reach out. Before diving into the cost of living of Brampton, Ontario, let's quickly do a bit of an overview about Brampton. Brampton is a vibrant, diverse city in the GTA. It's got amazing schools, it's got beautiful parks, the Etobicoke Creek runs right through it, and it is a thriving community. Also, I wanna mention the impact of rising interest rates on the housing market. The BOC decided to increase interest rates to combat inflation, which means higher mortgage rates for homeowners and buyers. They have actually increased 10 times since March of 2022. We did have a pause in April and in May of 2023, and we're currently in a pause, which is September and October of 2023. And our next announcement is on December 6th to let us know what is happening right before the beginning of 2024. Now let's jump right into the housing market. Now Brampton has seen a noticeable change in prices since the interest rate has started to increase. Right before the BOC decided to increase interest rates, we were in crazy bidding wars. There were about 30 to 50 offers put on every property and properties were being listed so low that they looked like they were selling $300 to $400 over asking price. That has completely diminished at this point. We are now almost in a buyer's market, which means buyers have the upper hand and we have somewhat stabilized in prices at this time. Now, when we find out what happens on December 6th, that's gonna tell us if we're still gonna see more of an increase in prices or if we're stabilizing and hopefully moving in a decrease in interest rates shortly. This noticeable decrease in prices is amazing for buyers who felt like they were priced out of the market when it came to home prices back in March of 2022. But the high interest rates are also pushing buyers out of the market because their qualification to purchase a property has completely changed. What is making it even more difficult to qualify is the stress test. The way the stress test works is it's either you get checked at 5.25% of an interest rate or 2% over the interest rate that the bank is giving you. Now with interest rates being almost at 7%, that means you're being checked at a 9% interest rate. This does protect you if interest rates do go up even more than they already have, but it makes it so much more difficult to qualify right now. And with the 7% interest rate, your mortgage payments are way higher than they used to be. Speaking about mortgage payments, it doesn't just affect home buyers, it also affects homeowners because at the end of the term, you are probably going to be expecting a large increase in your current mortgage payments. If you locked in a five year 2% back in 2020, like I did, when we hit 2025, our increase is going to be substantial from what we've been paying right now. But hopefully you have a few years left like I do and we're hoping that the interest rates do come down at that point so that our payments don't jump substantially than they have been right now. This on its own is a significant factor to the overall cost of living in Brampton, Ontario. And we can't just talk about homeowners. Renters are also being affected by this. You think that they just are paying rent and they don't have to worry about anything because they don't have a mortgage, but they are affected by this because the landlords are affected by this. Now, if the renter is in a property that was built from November 2018 or older, they are under rent control, which means every year there is a percentage that is released that tells you exactly how much the landlord can increase their payments. In 2024, that is 
Now, if you're in a building from November 2018 and newer, you do not have any rent control, which means if the landlord decides to increase your payments by $300, unfortunately, they can. Now, we can't just talk about the housing market because there are so many other things that we need to live our everyday life. For example, utilities, property tax, and expenses. The interest rates have affected more than just the housing market. It's a ripple effect. It has now affected groceries, gas prices, transportation, utilities. All of that has now gone up because interest rates have gone up. And especially like businesses, when their costs go up, they just increase it towards the customer so they don't have to take the bullet. You've also seen this happening where the price of a product stays the same, but they decrease the amount of product that they give you when you go and purchase an item at a grocery store. And this makes us allocate more money towards those expenses. That's just grocery stores. What about transportation? I remember in high school, I would take the bus to school almost every day and it was $2.50 to take the bus. Now that's $4.50 one way. Yes, you get to save that for two hours, but still, that is $4, almost $5 to just take a bus ride. And my school was like a seven minute drive away. If I had to do that every day at the price of $4.50 now, that would be so much harder. And if you just wanna to go to downtown Toronto on the GO train, Without a Presto card, that's $10.50 just to get downtown each way. And you're like, oh, I'm just gonna take public transit so that I can save money on gas. Well, that's so expensive now, so maybe you'll decide to take your car instead, but look at gas prices. Like, you can't win anywhere. Can we also talk about property tax? So I need to give you these numbers. In the past four years, your property tax has increased by a total of 5.29%. And did you know in 2023, they released that we increased property tax by 5.7% just in 2023 alone? So the amount that you are paying in increasing of property tax for this year alone is equivalent to four years. When home prices goes up, what happens? So does property tax. Now I know this is a lot of information and a lot of areas where prices have gone up, it's making it so much more difficult for us to be able to purchase just everyday groceries or fill up our car with gas so that we can move around or get to work or do some errands. So I wanna provide you with also some budgeting tips so that you can maybe save yourself in some sort of way. Now, number one is an emergency fund. You want to have a few months of expenses and utilities as well as mortgage payments or rent payments available for you for an emergency fund just in case something happens. Now you're like, how do I do that when I have so much money that is being given away to so many things? Number one, I can tell you this is happening in my own family. I have so many subscriptions that I just have set up that I don't even look at and they keep coming out of my account and I don't even use that on a regular basis. Number one, go back and look at your credit card bills. How many of us actually do that? Sit down, break down what is where I'm spending my money each month and see where you can reduce. I'm going to be straight up honest. The last time I did this, I was spending $1,200 a month on just groceries. And it was just me and my husband and my two dogs. I have a little son now, so that has changed. But when we looked at that, we've decided to start to reduce those costs. Do we need to go and buy and spend $500 at Costco? Costco just grabs you in and makes you pick up these things that you think you need, but you don't. You need to look at these expenses on a regular basis and see where you can reduce. And instead of using that money towards something else, throw it in a savings account so that you can start setting up that emergency fund for when you need it. Okay, number two of budgeting is going to be when you come up for renewal for your mortgage. Number one, you do not have to go back to the same bank that you used and have been using for the past five or three years or however long your term has been. You can speak to a mortgage agent who has access to multiple lenders who can shop around for you and see where the best rate currently is. Especially with rates being so high right now, you want to shop around. You don't wanna just be locked in for another few years with the same bank and realize that the rate that they gave you was not the best rate you could have gotten. 
I want to let you know that my husband is a mortgage agent. So if you need any assistance in just looking at what other rates are there, when you are looking at renewing your mortgage, go ahead and reach out to me and I will get you in touch with my husband because we want to help you in the best way possible so that you're not throwing away additional money that you don't need to be doing. Maybe something you could do is maybe go in for a one year variable rate so that at the end of that one year, maybe interest rates have changed and it could help you save money because you're only locking it in for that one year and then you have to renew again and maybe you'll be at a better rate by then. Now I'm not a mortgage agent, so this is just things that are coming to my head that might be able to assist you, but speak to a professional, speak to my husband, let them guide you in the best way possible so that you can save money just by locking in a lower rate or a better rate for now or for a short amount of time so that you can turn around and benefit in the future. Number three is take public transport. I know I just mentioned the costs of it, but honestly, sitting in traffic, wasting gas, is still going to be more expensive than taking public transport. What you also can do is let's say you're, it's like a Saturday and you're sitting at home and you're like, oh, I have to go to the grocery store. We are so used to just jumping into our car and going to the grocery store. Why don't you pick up the family and all go for a walk, go to the grocery store together. You can all pick up everything together and walk back. You are then not using your car. You're walking, you're getting some exercise and you're saving money in the same sense. Now don't go and overspend at that grocery store. Okay. Cause I know that's where they get you. You see all these things. Oh, I need this. Oh, I need that. Another thing you need to do is go through your freezer stash first. I'm so bad at that. I have all this meat from Costco in my freezer, but I don't use it and I go to Costco and I buy more. No, you need to use what's in your freezer and then go out, make a list, stick to that list. Don't steer off. Yes, I know kids will start to try to grab things and want additional things, but try to stick to that list as much as possible so that you're not overspending. In conclusion, we have to find ways to save some money. We are in such a situation where everything is so much more expensive. We need to look at what is happening in our lives. We need to look at where we're spending money and we need to cut down because it is going to affect us in the future. The cost of living has been impacted greatly by the increase of interest rates. Housing prices, transportation, utilities, expenses, all of it has seen changes because of this situation. You just need to find a way that works for you for budgeting or making changes in your lifestyle to still be able to afford living here or moving here if you are. If you have any questions on how to help yourself strive in this city or save some money or budget in some sort of way, you can reach out to me at any time. My contact information is right there in the description. Again, my husband is also a mortgage agent. We just want to try to assist you to get the best rates or best situation possible when it comes to your mortgage and your payments, or just finding ways to assist you in today's day and age. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and please don't forget to like and subscribe this video because I make a video every single week to help you guys strive every day. See you all next week.